Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and today I'm going to be getting my life back on track. If you're new here, you probably won't notice any difference, but if you're a returning viewer, you'll notice that I'm not wearing my glasses today. And that is because I'm trying out contact lenses for the second time. The reason is because I wanna go scuba diving in September and it's frustrating not being able to see properly underwater because my eyesight is so bad. It's so crazy looking at myself in a mirror without my glasses because usually when I look at myself in a mirror without my glasses, I can't see myself very clearly. For those who are interested, I have minus 4.25 on this side and minus 2.5 on this side. I'm, what is it in English? Myop? Myopia? Oh my gosh, this is sad. And astigmat, which is, I will find those words in English. Anyway, back to the video. I have a bunch of random to-dos that I need to tick off before a lot of my friends come to visit me for their summer holidays, but I'm dedicating an entire video to digital decluttering. I recently watched Unjaded Jade's video on digital minimalism and was totally inspired to do the same thing. One thing I don't always mention in my videos is that I use my bullet journal a lot in conjunction with my computer. I just have a lot of things that I need to declutter on my computer as well as my phone. My phone is a whole other story. My relationship with my phone is very, very bad. I spend an inordinate amount of time on my phone doing absolutely nothing. So I need to set new boundaries and just like declutter the space so I'm not tempted to use it. If you need to do the same thing, you can pause my video and continue decluttering your desktop, your downloads, your documents, your iCloud, your Google Chrome, everything. I'm just doing everything on my computer and on my phone as well and I hope you will enjoy this video. The first step of my digital minimalism is to declutter my desktop and I started by removing all the apps on the homepage that I just don't use every single day. And as much as I love my desktop background, it's a bit too cluttered so I need to minimize this. To change my desktop background, I'm going to use Canva. This is also the application that I use for just any photo editing that I need. And I'm going to go with a yellow background because yellow is my favorite color, so it just feels very appropriate. Also, summer, yellow, happiness, it all joins together. At this point, I remembered Unjaded Jade's video and her desktop background that she chose or she made, and I decided to go for something very similar. But instead of using three different boxes like she did, I actually changed it to two because aside from work and miscellaneous, I don't really have anything else to add into that. Then I downloaded it and added it to my desktop background. Once I'd made it my desktop background, I reorganized my files into the two different folders that I have. I renamed a few subfolders in case I needed to and deleted some files that I didn't need anymore. This desktop background as well has changed slightly since I did this video and I've added something in the blank space on the side. It's like a little photo with the flowers. It just makes it look nice. Actually, wait, here's a picture. The next distraction center that I need to manage is my downloads folder. I have so many files here, mostly to do with all of my video creation because I download everything and then I have to reorganize them, delete them, etc. And I just sometimes I don't do it. <laughs> so everything that I have in here, I need to delete everything and get rid of stuff and come back in two seconds and it'll all be cleared. Ta-da! Everything is gone. But just for a bit of background contextualization, I have different folders that I sort everything into or I can move everything to the trash. My main folders are my day job, my video editing things, my administrative things, and then just random. Moving on now to my iCloud. I just have a bunch of random files in my iCloud that I need to sort through. I just want to delete a bunch of them because I don't need them. It was just this one point in time where for some reason all of my files got backed onto iCloud when I didn't want them to and then for some reason I couldn't put them back onto my computer. I mean I could have but I was too lazy to do it. So I just have a bunch of things like half on iCloud and then the other half not on iCloud. So I got rid of pretty much everything that was in the desktop folder on iCloud liberated a lot of space. Then I just checked about the other extra files that I couldn't figure out, deleted the ones I did, moved some things back onto my desktop away from iCloud. I then went into my documents folder, checked if I needed to get rid of anything from there as well as my downloads and I was done. After clearing my desktop it was time for me to move on to my Google Chrome and I have the Momentum background for Google Chrome. Granted I do not use all the features simply because I'm not a student anymore so I just you know, I mean, I could use it for my work stuff, but I just, I don't. I think I started using Momentum back in 2015 when I first started university, and it was a really cool tool back then, but now I just don't. I have about 30 to 50 bookmarks saved on Google Chrome, and 
I'm sure that I do not need all of them. So I'm just going to go through all of the bookmarks, delete the ones that I don't need anymore, and do something with the ones that I have saved so that they're not just sitting there and not being used at all. What I mean by that is maybe storing the key takeaways in Notion or just writing them down somewhere that I can actually use this information instead of just having it sit on my computer randomly and just collecting dust. Following my bookmarks, the next thing I needed to do is to go through all of my plugins and extensions. And I have quite a few that I just needed to remove from Chrome. A lot of these have to do with work that I'm just not gonna be using anymore because I'm about to stop working. I don't know if any of you are interested in some of the extensions that I have, but I have Netflix Party to watch Netflix at the same time as somebody else. Ecosia, which is the search engine that I use as my default because they plant trees every time you search. I also like to use vidIQ for YouTube videos for all the information on those. I have Grammarly, super straightforward grammar checks. I also have a Notion clipper, but I never use this, so I might remove that, but not sure. LinkedIn, super important. I also have an ad blocker, not for YouTube, <laughs> and also Honey, but those I don't really use as much. One of the problems I have when I'm specifically going towards YouTube is actually not getting distracted by the videos that I see and going straight to like YouTube studio to upload a video and things like that. And what I found out with the vidIQ extension is that you can go straight to your channel analytics or to uploading a video directly through the extension on your Google Chrome. So from now on, I'm going to be using that to avoid distractions. This is so great. So I pinned it to my Google Chrome and I can see home, dashboard, upload, my videos, playlists, analytics, and comments. I've pretty much finished cleaning and sorting through all of my computers, uh, files and photos of everything that's on my on my Google Chrome. But one of the things that I'm not going to be showing but that I, I am doing is my email cleanup. So that is getting rid of all of my spam emails, clearing out the trash, sorting through the emails. I think I have like over 70 emails flagged. Uh, I need to sort through those to make sure that I'm only keeping the ones that I actually want to be there. Um, and this ties in very nicely with digital pollution. And digital pollution is basically the overconsumption of connected objects. It's the data we use to open up every single email. It is a contributing factor to the pollution of the environment. So it is something that you should take um, into consideration. And if you can, clean your emails out. Another one that I want to do is photos. And with my photos, I have about 16,000 photos on my hard drive. I know that there are many doubles. Uh, there are screenshots in there that I don't need. And there are just a bunch of random things that I would like to clear out. Uh, this, is gonna, this is a big project. It's something that will take me a very long time to do, but it's something that I'm definitely going to be doing because digital minimalism, digital decluttering is everything that I need right now in my life. All right, let's go through my phone. So I decided that to declutter my phone, it would not only help to get rid of apps that I don't use, but also to reorganize the apps that are on my phone so that if they're in a different location, then I can reevaluate and reassess the apps that I am using and not using again after a couple of months. And I also wanted to change up my screensavers and things like that so that I have a just a nice fresh restart. So I'm just going to go through everything and hopefully this can help you as well. So first of all, I'm just flipping through my different screens. I'm going to remove a bunch of, uh, what are they called? Little card widgets. They're called widgets. I'm going to remove a few of them, change them up a bit so that they look different. And then hopefully that helps me out a little bit. I definitely need my screen time up there because I'm always on my phone. So I always need to take accountability and to see what I'm using. Apart from that, I just had to remove a bunch of other things. I kind of looked into shortcuts again and shortcuts are actually really useful. So I created a new shortcut for my steps tracker and it doesn't look very aesthetic, but at least, you know, now I have direct access to the steps. And here it's just me creating the shortcut. So if you're interested, that's what it looks like. So now I just click on steps and I have the widget. I then removed the health from that section. I tried to find new widgets to add in, couldn't find any. Then it was just me flipping through my screens, trying to figure things out. I tried to make things more cohesive in a way. So for example, I have all my health stuff, my video editing stuff on the same row it just makes more sense that way i put all of my health stuff in one folder 
Uh, what else did I do? It was very difficult to try and figure out a way to make things cohesive and in a way that, that I understand what I'm putting them there for. I think I was pretty happy with this. I did try and remove a few extra applications from my phone just to avoid distractions, like all the social media stuff. I get lost on those for hours and hours on end and it's just very, very frustrating. Yeah, that was about it. Concerning screen time, I think it's very difficult for me personally to get away from my screens. That being said, in the last week or so, my screen time has not surpassed three hours a day, uh, which is very rare, very rare. Like this is like a, a very big achievement on my part. And I think that ties in partially with this small challenge that I'm doing with my best friend. It's if we surpass a certain amount of hours on our phone, we have to give each other five euros. So if I go over my limit, which was six Six hours then I would have to give her five euros we hadn't exactly worked out the details but since then I have not even gone over six hours so I'm pretty pleased with myself I feel like a financial motivation is a very intelligent way to lower your amount of time on your screen for the computers I haven't tested it out because I remember when they started first did screen time on max it was not working very well because even if the app was working in the background it still counted as being active so all of a sudden I had spent 72 hours on my computer even though there was only 24 hours in one day I don't know if they've updated that yet I just haven't bothered to use it again because I just you know I'm on my computer all day anyway for work so I just don't want to be particularly depressed shall we say by looking at how many hours I've spent on my computer at the end of the day because after work sometimes I watch Netflix. Somebody help me? Maybe I should stop watching Netflix. Maybe I should go and read a book. <laughs> anyway, I hope that uh, decluttering my digital spaces has helped you declutter yours. Uh, let me know in the comments if you are going to declutter your spaces or if you used my video uh, whilst you decluttered your spaces at the same time. Do you have any techniques on how to get away from your screens? Do you put your phone away whilst you're working. I've tried that so many different times. I put my phone face down in another room. Uh, I turn it off, you know. There are a lot of things that work and don't work for me. One of the things that I did try for a while was completely deleting social media off my phone for the entire week of work. So I Instagram, TikTok, yeah, that's the only two I use. And then at the end of the week, re-downloading them. But every single time I would just re-download them in the evening after work anyway, so that totally defeated that purpose. So I still struggle with my digital spaces. I think it's going to get better. In the summer, it's usually better. In the winter, it's atrocious. But I've always just tried to work on ways to make it more fun so that I'm not looking at my screens. I hope that this small piece of knowledge might help you with your screen time usage and I hope you have a great week. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Bye!